Okay, so uh, I'm back in this video, and I want to show you a few more things that we can do on graphs. Um, and, you know, pretty much every button that I press now is kind of a new experience if you don't know what you're doing, so uh, we're also probably going to learn more things along the way. Something that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to press doc for, so that's insert again. So this is where I inserted um, the graphing pages before. What I'm going to do this time, though, is I'm going to press 1. for. I'm inserting a new problem, and in this problem I want to add a graph. And now if you look at your tabs, uh, there's 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and now there's 2.1. And if you look, this is F1 of X, and it's totally empty. If I go back to 1.3, I clicked on the tab and press tab to see these things. F1 is full here. It's because I'm in an entirely different problem. It's like when you're doing homework or a problem in class. So there's problem one, there's problem two, and they're totally independent of each other. That's what's happening here. So 1.3 has to do with the first problem that I was working on and 2.1, totally new problem. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to graph a quadratic. So I'm gonna graph x squared minus, uh, let's go, let's go minus five x and plus six and see what we get. So I'm gonna press enter and here is the graph that showed up. So this is called a parabola or a quadratic, depending on uh, kind of depending on what you're doing at the time. Um, one thing that you might want to do is figure out values that are on this graph, and you can do that by pressing menu, and then option five takes you to trace, and then option one is graph trace, and this is a pretty useful thing. So what it's telling you right now is if you take zero and you plug it in here for x, the output you're going to get is 6, and you can see a 0 squared is 0, minus 5 times 0 is 0, plus 6, so you get 6. What's nice is, as long as this thing is up here, we can just keep typing numbers. So I'm going to type 1 and press enter, and it's going to change from plugging 0 into plugging 1. So I plug in 1, I should get 2. So that would be 1 minus 5 is negative 4, plus 6 is 2. If I plug in 0, so I'm just typing x equals, I, I'm typing 0, it says x equals 0. It's going to tell me what I would get if x equaled 0, and I get 6 again. If I type uh, 2, it gives me what I would get if I plugged in 2. Uh, so let's say that I wanted to find where this graph intersects the x-axis. Okay, so first thing i got to do is i got to get rid of, well, one of them is, I already found one of them. Actually, it's 2, 0. But um, I need to get rid of this. So to get rid of this, you hopefully remember you press escape. And then the best idea is to add, so I press tab. I'm going to graph 0, and now I'm going to go to menu, 8, 1, 3, click on that line y equals 0 that I graphed before, click on this, and you can see that two kind of overlapping things came up. I'm done finding intersection, so I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to click, so I'm clicking on this trackpad, I'm clicking and dragging so that they're not overlapping anymore. And I can see there are two places. Um, so that's the advantage of menu 813, is that it finds all the intersections at one time. Uh, the other method, which I'm not a fan of, finds only one at a time, which is kind of annoying if there's more than one intersection. Let's say um, I'm going to add another graph here. So I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to graph um, what? I'm going to graph x plus 15. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter, and I can see part of the graph, but I can't see a lot of the graph. And I ultimately want to try to find where this graph intersects this graph. So what I'm going to do is press menu and change the window. So I'm going to go down to window, which is option four. So I could just press the number four. And then I pretty much exclusively use these three things. So I use zoom box, zoom in, and zoom out. What I want to do is I want to see more of the picture right now, so I want to zoom out. So I'm going to press 4, or just enter at this point. And it asks for the center. So usually you want the center to be kind of just the center of the screen. Um, that's going to be the center of the screen when it zooms out. So if I click over here, it's going to zoom out, but the center is going to be over here, and that's kind of weird. So I'm going to select right here and just click. And I still can't see enough. So I'm actually going to move up here so that this will be the center of the screen, and press again, and it zoomed out. So now it's zoomed out and I can see what's going on. Now I'll show you what zoom box does. If you press menu and you go to four 
and option two is zoom box. Zoom box does something that's pretty cool. Um, what you do is you drag a rectangle. It's asking for the first corner. So I am going to pick over here and you click and you hold it down and drag. And what's going to happen is when I let go of this, the thing that's inside that little rectangle becomes the entire screen. So I'm going to let go and you can see that the thing that was in that rectangle became the entire screen. And I'm done with this, so I'm going to press escape to get rid of that. And now I want to find these intersections, so I'm going to press menu 813. So menu 813, can't stress it enough, you're going to press that like a million times. And click, and then I'm done with this, so I press escape. That's a big deal, people forget to do that all the time. And then I can click and hold down and drag these so that they're places that I can read them more easily. Um, and that's the whole deal. Okay, so those are a few things that you definitely need to know how to do. And hopefully now you know how to do them. So I hope this was helpful and good luck.